Welcome everyone to another one of our Facebook Live sessions. It's a wonderfully rainy, cold day in Kansas, perfect for sewing and talking about sewing. So here we are, I'm in a new pattern. It's not exactly new actually. If you're a Sew Confident member from series nine, you have the detour jacket pattern. It was part of the program last year but we are just launching it again this year as a standalone pattern and I'm going to talk about that just a little bit more. This is a good week for us. Friday is the launch of our video for So Confident Series 10 and the Ikena 2 jacket is featured this month. Thank you so much for ordering and enjoying our first two kits that we put out. We have just a few of those left, so we've introduced a couple more. And the first one is in this fabric, which I am crazy about. This is a rayon chalet. And I chose this because who doesn't love fuchsia? You know, this is a color that just makes me happy. And I was just telling Erin that as much as I love my new glasses that I have on, I just ordered glasses in this color in this shape. So next time you see me or in a couple of weeks, maybe you'll see me in that fuchsia. Interesting little conversation that we've also had. We get some resistance from some people about the color gold. And granted, this fabric has gold in it. But to me, the gold is what makes this particular pattern and colorway pop. And so that's why I, we brought out the gold color as the piping. To me, I see this as a colorway that is fuchsia and teal and this dark charcoal kind of char brown color as the background. It's more black than anything really. And so if you are a, a person who loves the um, jewel tones, I don't think you have to worry about the fact this has some gold in it. This, this is a strongly jewel toned fabric in my opinion. But it's the newest kit that's available this week. So hopefully you'll take a look at this. So watch for the Friday launch, March 19th for So Confident, the uh, tutorial for the Ikena 2. And then next Thursday, which I think is the 25th, is our live Zoom Q&A session. Actually two of them. We have one, this is central time, so it's at noon and six. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Yes, still time to sign up either for an individual workshop or for the yearly program as well. So I'll be saying that for the next nine months, never too late to sign up for So Confident Series 10. All right, last week we were bouncing topics around and someone, one of you probably out there, said, why don't you do a session on underlinings and interlinings and that actually came from a question from someone about interlining and I made I went on about this correction and sort of uh, explanation of the difference between underlinings and interlinings and it is these are terms that people do get confused and mixed up and use one term for both processes so today I'm going to try to sort this out I'm not going to go into super long depth about underlining and interlining and linings. I'm just going to give you the high points of the differences. If you want a more in-depth conversation about all of this, I suggest that you go to craftsy.com and download and purchase the class of mine called Underneath It All. That is a, an incredibly comprehensive and one of my best tutorials, I think, on facings, interfacing, underlining, interlining, lining, all of those topics. And it's organized in a really great fashion as only Craftsy uh, can do. So check that out for a much more comprehensive uh, look at this topic. But I'm going to talk about it today and show you some garments, show you some possibilities for options of materials to use for these, uh, these opportunities to change the character of your fabric. And then of course I'm going to show you some garments and some fabrics and we'll talk about that. But let's start with the terms underlining and interlining. So underlining is 
The purpose of underlining is to maybe alter the character of a fabric. There are times when I have fallen in love with something, but it's wispy, it doesn't have a lot of drape or hang, and it just, but I want to make something else than what probably the fabric was originally intended to be used for. So I can change the character of this fabric by cutting out my fashion fabric and cutting out an underlining fabric, same pattern pieces, marrying them, basting them around the edges. I usually do that by hand. And then considering it as one fabric. You forget that there are two layers of fabric. So for instance, you have an outer fabric. In this case, it's a silk crepe de chine. And I've underlined it with flannel cotton flannel. I've basted it around the edges and then just sewn it up using regular seam allowance or finish or whatever. In the case of underlinings, depending on what you're using as the underlining material, you may or may not want to then line the garment. Sometimes underlinings are attractive and there's no reason to line it. And sometimes in the case of flannel, perhaps, Maybe not a look you want on the inside of the garment, so you're going to want to then add a lining. This is an example of a garment that I underlined. I remember distinctly underlining. It's also lined, so I can't show you what the inner lining, or excuse me, see, I made that mistake, underlining is. But this was a very nice uh, jacquard silk, but it was fairly lightweight, and it didn't have any hang to it and I wanted it to be drapier and have a little more weight or body to the fabric. So I underlined it in silk organza in just the same method I was talking about. This is the peony vest and I like the way it turned out. The other reason to underline something is to perhaps uh, help a more um, sheer fabric or uh, something that's loosely woven, you're going to give it some structure. I remember uh, part of a threads challenge some years ago where I was sent a piece of raw silk that just, I knew it would break down over time with wear and the care of the garment. And so I underlined it in some China silk and it totally preserved that garment for a more long lasting garment because the texture of the fabric was what I considered delicate. So add structure, changes the character, and stabilizes a loosely woven fabric. This is the Tremont jacket. And I remember this fabric being something like a wool scarf. It was yardage and it was striped like this, so I didn't piece this, this is all one. And you can see I've used the horizontal in the back and the vertical in the front, so I didn't have to match any patterns. But at any rate, this fabric was just like, it would just billow and fly away and, and in my opinion, wasn't really suitable for a garment. It was more like what you might throw around your neck. So I underlined this garment in China silk. And so you can see, you can see the structure of the garment. Uh, you can see the seams. You can see the finish of the seams. This is a little, uh, and, but you can see that it goes clear into and it stuffed into the edges of the hem and the facing. So that is underlining. Now let me show you some of the options for what you would use for underlinings. Get my little board out here. So I'll put this up here as a reminder that underlining is fashion fabric, underlining fabric, used as one fabric. So here are some possibilities for you. There are actually quite a few. And what I do is I gather an assortment of possible underlinings and I might make a sample just like this. Here's another sample using another material. And then I can feel what it does 
to the fabric. And sometimes I'll close my eyes and not look at the back side so I don't know exactly what's on the back side. And I'll close my eyes and just kind of feel it and say, oh, I think I like that. So that's how I decide. So you saw the Tremont jacket lined, underlined in China silk, very lightweight silk. I use it mostly for linings. Something as simple as muslin. This is, in this case, I might line it also. With China silk, probably not. The flannel is a fantastic underlining. And I found this in an old garment. It was an Ellen Tracy jacket that I owned 30 years ago. And there was something about it that I really liked. It was a crepe de chine jacket, and it was lined, but I knew there was something inside of it. And crepe de chine has a tendency to wrinkle and maybe not hold up very well. So I took that garment apart, and sure enough, it was underlined in flannel. And it made that feel lofty and preserved the garment, and it didn't wrinkle as much. I could wear that jacket on an airplane, wad it up, and use it as a pillow and wear it off of the plane. Then you can also use lightweight, handkerchief weight linen for an underlining. Organza. Doesn't really matter what color ordinarily. It's probably not going to show through. You can use Batiste. And those are the selections that I would recommend for starting points for your underlinings. You can also use the same fabric. I could use the silk twice, or the cotton twice, or whatever. But all of these I would have on hand. I would make some samples. I'd get a feel for what I want. And then I would choose my underlining. So that is underlining. Now let's talk about interlining. <clears throat> That's a word that a lot of people use as a substitution for underlining. It is the same process in that you're cutting a fashion fabric and you're cutting an interlining and you're marrying them and using it as one. But the difference is that interlining has a totally different purpose and it is for warmth and to add loft to the fabric, but mostly for warmth. So this is what you see in the traditional Patagonia jackets and uh, all the, the uh, down jackets and all of that. Those would be considered interlined jackets. The only thing I could find in my whole repertoire of interlined garments was my peony vest made out of Tyvek. You heard me correctly. This is the material that they use to insulate a house. Now, you can buy this by the roll or the piece from Amazon. I went out to Lowe's and bought mine. It had, what did it have? It had Tyvek written all over it. So I had to, of course, well, you could use that too. If you like the word, any of those letters of Tyvek, you can certainly feature that. But at any rate, this is a really in interesting uh, fabric to sew. You can also paint on it. You can also use a hair dryer and crinkle it. I mean, it has some really interesting properties. In this case, though, I quilted it. This is lined in a cotton knit, but inside of this is thinsulate. So here are the possibilities for interlinings. We'll go back to cotton flannel. And it doesn't have to be a solid. It could have bunnies on it or turtles or whatever. This is Prima Loft. You can see now we're talking about lofty things, things that have some dimension to them. not weight necessarily, but things that have loft and warmth. You can buy wool batting. Quilters know about some of these materials. This is wool batting. Warm and natural is, I believe, a trade name for something that quilters use a lot. 
And then there is thimsolate. And this is a garment that's been interlined, the start of a garment that's been interlined in thimsolate. I think my basting has come out here, but normally this would be basted together. You don't want to put these sorts of lofty interlinings into your hems, and you don't want to apply them to facings or double layers of collars. You have to think about what pieces and parts you actually want to have this material in and then cut away where you don't want it or don't apply it to the actual piece. This, in this case, this, this um, dart has been sewn, but I would cut away this interlining away from the dart so there's less bulk right here. But the dart is actually sewn with both of the fabrics. So that's interlining. All right, so get rid of this. Linings, I'm not going to get into too much, but the classic lining is Bemberg rayon. And we actually carry, I don't know, 15 or so colors of Bemberg rayon. It's the classic lining. It is beautifully silky, which is why you want to use something like that. The purpose of lining then is to really conceal the inner workings and construction aspects of the interior of a garment. And you want something that will slide over your body or other garments really easily, which is why we're looking for something that has a fairly slick finish. And Benberg Rayon has that. China Silk has that. There are certain acetate linings that you may want to use. You can dig in your stash and get out all of those old crepe de chins and silk charmeuses that you have in your stash in the days when you were making silk blouses when you went to the office. Remember the ones with the bows? I had a lot of those. Those are great linings. Make your lining fun. It doesn't have to be solid color. It can be something totally outrageous, a color that you never wear. It's going to be on the inside. It's going to be in that gold color that you think you can't wear, line it in gold. So anyway, uh, those are your possibilities for lining. So let's look at some garments here. So I have on the detour jacket, which I told you about. And last January, we introduced the detour jacket. And the first alteration to the jacket was to make it into a coat. And this is a rayon crepe fabric. And, you can, and we did some swinging to this garment. I didn't bother to put buttons on it. I couldn't bear to think about putting buttonholes and buttons on this garment. But I'm pretty crazy about the way this feels. And this feels great because this is lined. And so one of the tutorials, the January tutorial of 2020, do I have my years right, <laughs> um, was to how to lengthen this garment into a swing coat and how to line it how to bag the lining. So this is the first of the detours. The second detour was this. I should have had this unbuttoned already. Sorry about that. This is a wool gauze. I loved the fabric. Part of the, actually, now that I have it buttoned up, I might as well show you. Part of the learning um, skill in that second tutorial from February was how to match the motifs. Something that we discuss in this month's Ikena 2 jacket workshop, actually. So the difference between the January tutorial of learning how to line and the February tutorial is... Gosh, here we go. This one is underlined. So now you see the seam structure. You see that it's been sewn, three threads surged together, both side seams, arms eye seams, tucked into the facing. In this case, I've used a little Hong Kong finish using some China silk 
to finish the hem, which just really finishes that off. So you learn how to underline, you learn about this Hong Kong finish, and you learn about matching motifs in that tutorial. So, gosh, this feels like a million bucks. But this is, again, this wool chalet is one of those fabrics that just doesn't have a lot of body to it. It's very much like this on the Tremont. And by underlining it, I changed the character of the fabric, gave it more drape, and refined that look and uh, feel a little bit more. You know, in my former career, I was an interior designer. And we would make really... I called them ball gowns for windows, really luxurious window coverings and draperies. And one of the things I learned was, let's say you want to use silk at your windows. Well, you could hang some silk, but it'll look like something's not right. It's, it's not luxurious. The folds are crispy, not luxurious. There's not a lot of hang to it. So we would use something called bump which is an underlining, very much like a heavy cotton flannel. And then we would line those draperies as well. And the difference in the, how it looked at the windows was unbelievable. Now you had these gorgeous underlined and lined draperies versus this single layer. Looked like you'd bought this, perhaps, on sale. And this you'd spent some money for. And that's the same concept that applies to garments. The inner structures of garments really help how they hang, how they look, how they last. And I'm a big fan of, of doing what's necessary because I loved this fabric, but it wasn't going to work on its own as a jacket. It would have looked a lot cheaper. So this is un an underlined detour. The third detour variation for March of last year was to take the detour jacket and make it into a vest. And this time we just obviously left the sleeves off and used a handkerchief linen, used some organza for the facings so that you didn't have this complication of little dots and patterns showing through. The front is bound, just like the Hong Kong finish, kind of, sort of, not exactly, uh, that I used on the hem of the previous detour. This is a uh, bias binding in silk charmeuse for the edges. So this is the, those are the three detour jacket variations, all of which have now been combined into one, what we're calling compendium. It's a 56-page booklet that you would download, perhaps print out at home, send it out to be printed on some glossy paper, whatever, maybe spiral bind it or put it into a notebook. But in the compendium are the instructions for lengthening and lining the detour jacket, underlining the detour jacket with matching motifs and a Hong Kong finish, and turning it into a vest with bias binding and organza facings. So that is now a new product as of today on our website, and it is called the Detour Jacket Compendium. Is that the name of it? Well, close. <laughs> Betsy will make sure you know what that is. All right. So then, um, other things that have been, another uh, approach to underlining. Kathy made several of the coats from the now pattern, that's from the now and zen pattern, where she's used something on the outside and then underlined in a knit, in this case a stripe. And now all of the seams are on the outside. So that the underlining is actually a feature. But don't forget about using knits as underlinings. So this is the now jacket. Boy, this feels good right now today, actually. And the two pieces were married together, the outer fabric and the inner stripe knit. And then the seams were sewn to the outside and then trimmed so that you see just a little bit of that 
underlining stripe peeking through at the seams. And obviously you see it with the cuffs rolled up and the collar as well. Then she did it as a longer piece and broke it up even more. So this is the now jacket. This time in a viscous jersey, underlined in another viscous jersey, a stripe. Same process though, but this time there's a seam added, a pocket added, it's been lengthened, but this is one of those great sort of duster length spring coats, we'll call it. So there's a whole tutorial on this of how to do this, how to lengthen it, how to split it up, how to add the pockets, how to construct this, and it's called Double layer knit, double layer knit coat. There you go. Very uh, clever title, wouldn't you say? <laughs> All right. So um, the other garment that Kathy has underlined in a knit is the Eighth Avenue skirt. So this is a waffle weave knit, and she wanted this to have a little more weight and body to it, and so. She simply took some lightweight knit and underlined it. Again, so she's used the pieces as one piece and then simply constructed the skirt. And it has a great feel. I know, obviously, you can't feel it, but this just has a whole different character to it because it's been underlined. I actually really like it with this coat. I don't know, that just happens sometimes when you put things on a rack. I had never looked at them together until just now. Okay. So, uh, let's look at some fabrics. Um, let's see, what do I want to have on? I guess I'll keep this. No, maybe I'll put on that new Ikea. Why not? Okay, so here are some fabrics. I've pulled some fabrics that I think would make interesting fabrics for jackets, shirts, tops, skirts, whatever, but to make those into garments that have a little more body to them, you're gonna to wanna to underline them perhaps. You wouldn't have to, but these are, these are fabrics that stand alone are more blouse weight, but if you wanna turn them into something to make for skirts, jackets, coats, you might wanna think about underlining, interlining, or lining. So let's start here. I hung this up here and I am crazy about this fabric. First of all, this is exactly what you're seeing on the runway are these big graphic prints. Now because of the way this is printed, you could use this in a couple of different ways. You could have one side of your garment in this, another side in this. Or you could cut this on the cross grain and have the concentration of color the richer colors at the bottom of something. This is a silk charmeuse, I believe. Let me look here. Uh, it's silk and viscose. So whenever you add rayon or viscose to silk, that does one thing, it changes the price. You know, pure silk fabrics are much more expensive than blends. And they're a little bit easier to sew. They you can care for them very easily. They wash nicely. So silk and viscose for this. Now, I think that you could, this has endless possibilities of what you could underline this with. Any of the ones that I've talked about from flannel to silk organza to linen to batiste to muslin, but you could also underline it in this striped knit, depending on the garment. This is a very pale uh, blush pink and neutral little stripe, and I think this would be fantastic together. It also works for like the now long jacket, the double layer knit coat. Put the, the stripe on the inside and the solid on the outside. Both of these have the same weight. They're actually sort of meant to go together. I think we got them from the same company, same dye lot. So they're really a nice companion. 
Now, I brought out a piece of linen. I love linen. I don't, people do love linen, but people also have this love-hate with linen because it wrinkles. And I've learned that if you fuse some very sheer, ultra sheer interfacings to linen, it totally changes the character and keeps it from wrinkling in the same way. So I've made many a pair of pants that have been completely fused, where I've fused the entire yardage and then I've cut out my garment. And it does change the character of it. So if you don't like the, um, the looks of wrinkles, maybe that's one option. Even if you just underlined it and they're two separate fabrics put together, it would help the wrinkling uh, property of linen. So I happen to love this color, sort of the whole range of colors here. This is viscose, I believe. Yes, this is a viscose print. And what you can't see uh, on the screen is this has a little bit of a semi-sheer black background to it. Now, I don't know that that would keep, prevent me from making this as a flowy jacket, but if you underlined this in, let's say, black china silk, then it would come off as a perfectly opaque garment, but still keep its drape. This is our leopard print fabric. I'm sorry that the leopards or cheetahs, whatever they are, are upside down here, but it's the way it came off the roll. Again, this is semi-sheer, and this is uh, silk. This is viscose. Boy, sometimes you can't tell the difference. That's interesting. This is rayon. But the drape is fantastic. But if you wanted to put a little structure, let's say you wanted to make the Tremont jacket, I would underline this in organza. It has a little more of a crisp flavor to it, and I think it would give, give that some structure which this jacket can handle because of the way it's built and the way it crosses over. It looks good in a drapey fabric, but it also looks good in a fabric that has a lot of body to it. This is one garment that you can make in almost anything from quilting cottons to lightweight canvas to, they call some of those quilting fabrics canvas actually, to knits, to wool, to something very tissue weight as well. This is a rayon chalet. This would make a fantastic Ikena 2 jacket. In fact, we toyed with the idea of putting this into a kit, which we may still do. But here again, this is really a common theme where you're seeing these jewel tones popped with that golden color. But I think anyone who can wear these beautiful teals and blues would enjoy wearing this colorway, even with the gold tones in it. But I love the leafy, sort of abstract watercolor aspect of this. You know I'm into watercolors now. All right, this is silk charmeuse. Let's, I better check because I've been saying them all wrong. Yes, this is silk charmeuse. But one of the things I love about this is this border. So let's say I would make this jacket. I would use this border as the lapel and separate it with a little bit of black trim. But I would underline this, and I would underline this and line it in something like china silk, uh, maybe lightweight batiste. It, it would depend. I'd have to check. But I would, to make a jacket out of this, I would, I would underline this. Same with this one. This is silk and viscose again. This comes in panels, but look at this opportunity of using this stripe in an interesting way. That could be the lapel. That could be just uh, trim. Could be on the bottom at the hem of something. But paisleys are so popular now. They're just exploded all over, ready to wear, and in so many of the fabrics that we're getting now from our suppliers. This is the silk organza. We do carry it. It's on our website. We only carry white. It seems to be the color that works mostly. And if you want to grab some of the yardage just to have on hand for experimenting with underlinings, it would be a great opportunity. Now, we have a couple of other knit coat layered possibilities. You could have a black knit coat underlined in the deep red and black stripe. That's a great combination. I can't tell you when I go to my closet how many black coats I have. I can't seem to get enough of them, even though I'm not supposed to wear black, but I don't care. I wear it anyway. Everybody needs a black coat. And then pop that with a little color. Two more fabrics that I think 
would make great jackets. I'm crazy about the little print of this beautiful fuchsia. But see how wispy this is? You know, this, this, this is not hard to hold. I can always tell when a fabric um, needs to be maybe thought in terms of underlining and lining because I can hold it all day long and my arm doesn't get tired. It's not a weighty fabric. This is very lightweight and wispy. And this would benefit from some sort of underlining. This is actually a twill. And this is, again, viscose and silk but a very charming pattern and a fabulous color. And then this, for the, a little summer jacket or vest, this would be a great little detour vest to wear over white jeans, white t-shirt. You could underline this in silk organza or maybe china silk, something very, very light, and I wouldn't bother to line it, but this would be a fun, almost it's almost voile-like, and it's cotton with a little bit of silk in it. So it has a nice feel to it. It's really smooth and really soft. I think I have shown you everything. So we have some things on sale. Here are the patterns that are on sale this week. We have the peony vest. The Detour Jacket, which is a download. So the Peony and the Detour Jacket are download patterns. The Now and Zen, which is the double layer knit coat. The Tremont Jacket. And the 8th Avenue Skirt. And the 8th Avenue Skirt has just been, uh, it's a printed pattern, but we also have it as a download. So you have a choice on that. The Now and Zen and the Tremont are printed patterns. The compendium that I talked about that has the variations in it. In addition to the tutorials on the three variations, this is just loaded with beautiful photography of inspirational colors and garments as well. Tutorials, we have the double layer knit coat tutorial on sale and bagging the lining is on sale as well. I think I've done it. All right. Okay. Any questions? Um, they would like to see the Tremont on. Okay. I knew there was a reason why I dressed the way I dressed today. <laughs> you can wear this open or buttoned. This is one of the patterns that we have that looks good on everyone, and, and that is, I'm not exaggerating. I've never seen this not look good on somebody. You can also make this using the left front twice, so use it as a left front and a right front. If you don't like this asymmetry here, then you could have two left fronts that are the same length. Use one as a right front. <laughs> Okay, and what is the pattern underneath the tree? This is the Mix It Tank. It's part of the Mix It shirt top and tank pattern. And this is a knit fabric that is, I guess this is a way of underlining. I've never really thought it like, like this before, but this had a little bit of a sheer stripe to it. And so I've used it as a second layer. So in a way, I guess that's sort of underlining, make a second layer, never thought of it like that. But yeah, Mix It Tank. It's my good basic for wearing under a lot of things. Okay, how do you decide between using a lightweight fusible versus an underlining to stabilize a jacket? Are you, you mic'd? I don't need to repeat the questions. Correct, I'm mic'd. All right. Yes. Well, that would be an experiment. But anytime you're going to fuse something, it's definitely going to change the character differently and probably make it a little bit stiffer than some sort of underlining. Uh, so that would be in a test. I would have to test both. Um, our, the interfacing that we use primarily, the Japanese ultra sheer interfacing, I've never had any trouble with that releasing from a fabric. But some fusible interfacings do release, and that may not, what you, may not be what you want to have over time. So that's part of the decision as well. Um, the now, uh, the double layer now, um, did Kathy make the collar deeper on that jacket? The double layer now 
has the same collar. It's not deeper, but in the pattern, the collar is normally folded in half. So normally when you construct it, you have a collar that's this wide. But Kathy's just not connected that and left the full size pattern piece as the full collar. Okay. Um, what fabric would you use for the detour in the heat of Arizona? I'd like something to cover my arms when in church or other venues with cold air conditioning. I would use a lightweight linen, handkerchief linen, or any sort of linen. I would. I think viscose uh, is is a cool option for you as well if you want the drapiness of the viscose. Um, actually, yeah, I, I would think any of the of the really light, almost sheer viscose pieces would be nice as well. Um, By the way, I have seen the detour made up in a lot of different cottons as well, and it works just great. You may have answered this when you were talking about the linen, but um, what do you recommend for loose pants made out of lightweight silk, bagging the lining or fusible interfacing interlining to avoid wrinkles and keep the flowing look? Okay, so lightweight linen, or lightweight pants silk. in silk. Mm -hmm. What would I, uh, it, I, I probably wouldn't do anything to that because most silks are not going to wrinkle in a very bad way. It depends on what kind of silk it is, I guess. But if it's like silk charmeuse or silk crepe de chine, um, you're going to get a nice flow to that and I wouldn't change the character of that. So I don't think I would underline a silk flowy pant. Now, as I say that, if I'm making uh, some really luxurious pants, let's say in a four-ply silk that are flowy, I might consider a lining in chiffon or georgette. That would give the, body, the, the look of a more, um, a more designer, uh, completed look of pants. I would connect them at the waistband, but hem them separately. So that's a diff. I would not bag the lining of pants. If I thought I heard that as part of the question as well, you would never bag the lining of pants. You would line pants. And silk uh, silk chiffon is my favorite lining of pants, whatever the fabric is, whether it's wool in the winter or linen in the summer. When using silk organza under linen, would that be um, to get you know keep the wrinkles away? Um, would that be underlining or lining? Um, that would be an underlining, in my opinion. Uh, marry them together. Linen to silk organza. Yeah, the lining doesn't prevent wrinkling in quite the same way as underlining does, because when you're underlining something, it, they are together. And they are basted around the edges and they become one, so to speak. Lining still has looseness and flow on the interior. And so whatever the wrinkling properties of the outer fabric are, it's probably going to still be there almost as much. Um, the dot silk viscous at the top there, is it sheer? Um, would you see the lining fabric through it? No, this is not sheer. Okay. Well, I don't know that I'd line it in black. Um, I mean, I can sort of, if I look hard, see that stripe through there, but I would just uh, use something sort of neutral. I don't think it would matter what particularly. Is silk organza stiff or soft? Silk organza is crisp. I wouldn't call it stiff. Uh, it is crisp, but one of the reasons I like silk organza is it has it breaks down and becomes softer with use and wear. And so it becomes more like the character of the fabric it's working against. Unlike polyester organza, which is very stiff and very crisp and never changes character. So that's why I use silk organza. Um, 
when you have your like your garment fabric, your interlining or your underlining or your lining, do you wash all of those pieces before you start your project? Um, the answer is no. Uh, <laughs> if I'm going to underline, interline, or line a garment, that is not a garment I'm going to throw in the washing machine. And so I'm not going to pre-wash any of those fabrics. Now, I might steam them just to make sure I don't get some weird shrinkage going on or something like that. I might steam them at my ironing board, but I'm not going to pre-wash those fabrics. All of which are washable, but as a unit and the garment that I'm making, I'm not going to destroy all of the things I've built into that garment in the washing machine. Can Bimber Grayon be used for pants or tops? Well, Bimber Grayon, I don't know. I think it will forever look like lining to me. And I don't think so. I mean, I guess you can, but I wouldn't personally. <laughs> um, is it easy to lengthen the Tremont? Oh, yeah. Well, um, Yes and no. We have length and shortened lines on the Tremont. But those two front pieces are asymmetric. And so when you split the pieces, then there's an offset that happens on the side seam. So you have to reconnect that. And what I do is I trace the original shape, set that aside, cut the pattern, spread it, <clears throat> and I put that shape back on the table underneath. And I try to emulate the original curve, connecting from right under the arm to the bottom of the hem. I'm not paying too much attention with what's happening at the offset of the split. So I try to get back to an original shape, even though it's lengthened. Yeah, I've, we've lengthened the Tremont. I've seen Tremonts lengthened a lot, and they're fabulous. Is the compendium the same as what's in the So Confident series? Yes, if you have the So Confident series nine, you have all of them as three separate tutorials. You have three separate 55 page tutorials. This compendium is consolidating those three into ones where you have all the techniques, but less beauty, I suppose, if I say it like that, less, fewer beauty shots, but you have all of the technical information that's in those three. But if you have series nine, you don't need the compendium. Um, I think Barbara, she's asking for your opinion on this. Um, she was told never to use fusible lining on an entire garment. Fusible lining or a fusible interfacing? It says lining, but... It says lining. I don't know about fusible linings, frankly. Uh, if you mean interfacing, that's possible. Uh, then I've done that. And so the word never would, nev would never apply to my vocabulary uh, because I can always break those rules. But uh, Fred Blaybaum, who used to be a teacher at the sewing workshop in San Francisco, was a great proponent of fusing, let's say, silk dupioni. And she had a pants pattern that was very fitted. And I remember fusing my entire yardage and then making the pants, and they were fantastic. So it can be done. Uh, would you underline a boucle? I've always used a crepe back satin. What are your thoughts? That would be fantastic. For a boucle, you could use crepe back satin. You could use, you're talking about underlining? Is that, are we talking about underlining? Underline. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you could use crepe back satin. You could use uh, any of the silks, crepe de chine, even silk charmeuse. Um, a jacket that I was going to show you today and sort of opted out on was a boucle jacket that Kathy made, and she underlined it in Batiste. Okay, um, what would you use with a lightweight uh, faux suede for a jacket? A lightweight faux suede jacket for an underlining or? Doesn't say. Doesn't say. Um, if I were going to underline a faux suede, I might experiment with lightweight flannel, muslin, batiste, um, linen, and then I'd probably line it. Okay, can you address interfacings that are appropriate for garments that are underlined? Garments that are underlined, then our Japanese ultra sheer interfacing is my interfacing. 
I use it for everything. It doesn't matter the weight of the fabric. It's just my interfacing of choice. So I would suggest that. But you know, you always want to test. You always want to apply some little patches of whatever interfacings you have on hand or you're thinking about using and then close your eyes and feel them and see how, what it's doing to the character of the fabric. Every situation is different. So I hesitate to say, oh, you must use this and this when you have to make some decisions based on your fabric and what pattern you're making. Um, can the wrinkled gauze linen you sold last year be used for the Tremont jacket and would it need underlining? Well, that would be a fun, fun jacket and it wouldn't, it wouldn't need to be underlined. If you're in a certain climate and you want that semi-sheer, gauzy, crinkled look, I would probably not underline it. But if you wanted it to have more body or weight, and you wanted to carry that through more seasons, maybe into the fall or winter, depending on where you live, then I'd be more inclined to line it or underline it or even line it, depending on the garment. Um, would you underline a felted wool vest? A uh, felted wool vest? Maybe not. And if, the only reason I might consider underlining is if that wool felt is really prickly or stiff, or uh, prickly or, or catches on things, and you want it to hang better over a garment. Maybe it's hanging up someplace because it's not able to drop. That would be the only reason I would put an underlining or lining on wool felt. Um, the green detour, what fabric is that? This is a polyester waffle weave knit. Oh, I'm thinking the, the detour oh. jacket. Oh, detour oh, jacket? Wool. Oh, this is a wool uh, cashmere, actually. Yeah. My color. <laughs> but any color, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see. It's my favorite jacket, actually, of all time. I think that's the reason why we came out with a detour jacket. <laughs> Is that jacket? Probably so, because of this jacket, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, I, I need to uh, take this to dry cleaner. I've worn it so much that it actually has some marks on it that need to go away. Okay, I don't see, I don't see any other questions. Okay. You well, mentioned the sales. Right? I mentioned the sales. Okay. Okay. Uh, Compendium detours the new pattern. We have new kits for Ikena two jackets. Um, it was a good week. So I'll see you next week. Thanks.